Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot and recently Disney announced, officially starting today, that all guests must wear face coverings at all indoor activities, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. And I thought it would be fun to come out and show you why I think Epcot is the best park when it comes to having to wear a mask and also enjoy some food and wine. Anywho's, let's go do this. It being the first day that face coverings are required here at Walt Disney World again, I pulled out my favorite, I love Walt Disney World. I love this retro mask. I have like three of them, so these are the ones I'm probably gonna be wearing for a little bit. A couple of amazing observations that I noticed when I walked in. Some of the cast members outside are not wearing any face masks. The security or actually some of the uh, attractions people that are just waiting outside aren't wearing face covering. So I think only the ones that are indoors and just like us, whenever we go indoors, we have to wear our face coverings. But that makes me a little bit happy. I haven't seen a lot of signage about the mask actually anywhere. I saw two signs when I walked in that said masks are required indoors, but nothing at the attractions. And the cast members are just telling people, thanks for having your mask on, which is a great way to do it. And it seems to be the majority of people are just automatically putting their mask on, no fuss. I've uh, watched a, a couple minutes as they were going into Spaceship Earth there, and most people just automatically just put it on without even being told. I plan on heading over to Test Track. I want to see what the wait time is for that. I would love to ride Test Track, but if it's like an hour and a half wait, I'll probably pass, but you know, it's always a good ride. It's something I always want to do whenever I come to Epcot. If we can't get on Test Track, it's okay because we're gonna hop right on over to World Showcase and enjoy some food and wine, which leads into why I feel like this park is the best park when it comes to actually wearing a mask. All of the attractions, well, mostly all the attractions are indoor queues because if it's an outdoor queue, you still need to put on your mask. And if it's indoors, it's nice and AC'd. And I feel like one of the biggest struggles with masks is it gets hot. So you don't wanna be sitting out in the sun wearing a mask, at least in here, you're gonna be indoors. Test Track is one of the few locations that actually has a queue outdoors. Most of all the other attractions are indoors, like I said. And that's not the only reason I feel like this is the best park when it comes to uh, wearing a mask. Oh, wait a second. Did that monorail just honk at me? That was amazing. Oh, I miss seeing the monorail here at Epcot. And it gave me a little honk. Sorry, I feel like that was a big like squirrel moment. Squirrel, but with the monorail. I really get excited whenever I see the monorail. Anywho, what I was saying is, this isn't the only reason I feel like Epcot is the best place when it comes to having to wear a mask. The biggest reason is World Showcase and Food and Wine Festival. You can basically do all of World Showcase. Well, uh, not, not all of it, but you can enjoy food and wine and it be all outdoors and not have to wear a mask. So like, that is amazing, right? Looks like Test Track is at a 60 minute wait. I do see a cast member wearing, like uh, holding a sign that says, wear a face covering unless you're stopped while eating or drinking. So normally you're not allowed to take food or beverage in, but they do have these signs that say you can basically pull your mask down if you wanted to, to take a sip of water. And uh, I think we're gonna try it. I think we're gonna go to single rider line. I am so happy single rider lines are still here. This is gonna make things so quick. We made it to the sim track in no time, like under 10 minutes. That is crazy. And I'm so excited to ride now. One of the things I have to get used to again is my glasses fogging up whenever I'm on the ride. But honestly, I feel like my glasses fog up all the time, no matter what. So I don't think the mask really has anything else to do with it, but it does intensify it. Thank you. <laughs>
my shit, it's almost covering my eyes. <laughs> Honestly, that was so strange to ride again with the mask. It's only been a couple of weeks, maybe maybe a month or two. I'm not even sure how long it's been, but I feel like I was riding with a mask for the first time. For the first time in forever. Now it's back out into the daylight and we can take our mask off. Whew. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I will wear a mask if I have to, 100%, I have no issues with it, but I think along with anyone else, I think I would prefer not having to wear a mask. It doesn't bother me at all, like, you know what I mean? I, I can definitely survive. We did it for so long, do you know what I mean? So if this is just uh, another step that we have to take in the best direction, then I'll mask up any day. But if I can walk around World Showcase without a mask, breathing in this beautiful Florida air, it's amazing. So I think that's what we're gonna do, head over to World Showcase, and then I think we'll swoop back around. Maybe we'll do like a U, we'll go this way, and then right back over into Future World, and to the other side of Future World, where Soarin' and the land is, and maybe ride some more rides. I have done two videos so far of just straight food and wine festival, and uh, I still haven't gotten something from every single booth, so I think we're gonna start over on this side a little bit and get maybe one or two items just from some boots that I haven't went to. If you wanna see my full uh, food and wine videos, I will put the links for those videos in the description, and I go through a lot of the food here. Like, I, I do eat a lot, and I drink a lot, so that's a good thing. That's why I like food and wine. One of the stands I haven't gotten anything from yet is Mexico, which is a little strange. Normally, I actually come up the center there, so that's why I missed this one. And uh, yeah, I think we'll take a look and see what they got. I'll try anything that's new, really. I would not mind, though, getting some of the porchetta from the Swanky Saucy Swine, which was one of my favorite items so far this year. It was so good. And the potatoes with the porchetta. Oh, boy. I am a little hungry. So maybe we'll get something uh, new and also one of the returning classics. Here is a look at some of the things the Mexico booth has. They've got a taco de ribeye. Ooh, is this a chocolate bread pudding? I think I might get the chocolate bread pudding, but I also need a drink too. They have a Mexican craft beer. So maybe we'll get a little Mexican craft beer, a little bit of the chocolate bread pudding, and then a couple uh, porchettas and potatoes. That sounds like an amazing meal right there. I remember when the parks first reopened, and I think it was Festival of the Arts, or it was Flower Garden, or Taste of Food and Wine. There was actually, I think we went a full uh, round of festivals during the uh, pandemic. And uh, I remember waiting in lines with a mask on, being outside, just standing here in line wearing a mask. So them just asking for you to wear them indoors, I'm happy to comply. And I'd be happy to comply if they told us we need to wear them all the time here, because I love being here. I just love being here, so I'll do whatever it takes. You know what I mean? And holy moly, this looks so good. What? I can't believe I missed this. That is amazing. That is actually like bread pudding and then chocolate sauce. Oh wow, I can't wait to dive into here. I don't know what else they got going on in there, but this is impressive and it's, it's a big portion. Look at that, it's pretty heavy. For some reason, I thought that the bread pudding was gonna be like a chocolate bread, like the chocolate bread pudding, but this is just like bread pudding but with chocolate uh, sauce poured on top and I think I'm gonna like this a lot. I think I'm gonna really, really like this. I think we're just gonna take a little corner piece right here. Oop, oh, there we go. Easy to cut. Add a little bit of that chocolate sauce right there. Perfect. It's like a cake. I really hope I don't spill any chocolate sauce on my white t-shirt, but I'm gonna enjoy this a lot. Wow. Oh, that is good. I knew it. <laughs> oh, I am pretty positive this is gonna take my top spot for my favorite dessert at food and wine festival before i really loved that pistachio cake but this is just really much too good like perfect perfect texture too because i feel like a thing with bread pudding is it gets like gooey this is like nice and firm and that's the way i like it right there 
I do enjoy myself bread pudding. I do love Ohana bread pudding, and I also love uh, Sebastian's bread pudding. That one's like a pineapple coconut one. So now I can chalk up chocolate bread pudding right into the mix. Now we gotta try ourselves the Mexican beer. Definitely need something to wash that down with. It could get you a little thirsty as you're eating just a bunch of you know, bread pudding and cake. The only thing I don't like about uh, this Mexican beer is it's a bottle beer. So like when you order the smaller one, they just give you like half poured out beer like they, they put back in the fridge. So they'll open up a fresh bottle, pour out a cup, and then put it back in the fridge without the top on, and then pour it again. And I feel like it makes the beer flat, but I'll find out. Maybe it's not flat. Maybe it's very good. Oh, it's, it's good. It's not flat. So it must have not have been sitting there much long. Huh. It's a good beer too. Uh, they just call it Mexican craft beer. Oh, it says Tulium Artisan Lager. But the headline is just Mexican craft beer. Mexican craft beer. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to hold off on getting the porchetta. I really, really do love it, but there are another booth, there's other booths that I haven't gotten anything at yet. So before I go getting repeats, I feel like I need to try something from each booth. So we're gonna head on over to China. If you wanna watch me eat the porchetta, then uh, you can watch the opening day video. I think that was my favorite food item of the whole entire video. And uh, yeah, I'll put those in the description. I think I already said that. So now I'm just repeating. <laughs> I haven't heard that loud announcement before in a while I haven't heard it I mean along with Mexico another stand that I did not go to yet it's kind of shocking is China and uh, yeah I think it's because it's usually a very long line but today I'm all for it. Take a look at the menu they got here for China. They've got pan fried chicken dumplings, a bao bun, and crispy fried pepper shrimp. I might be interested in getting both the dumplings and the shrimp. Oh, the, the shrimp comes with noodles. Oh boy, they also have a kung fu master. Oh boy, I can't believe I missed this. And a quick turn of events. I decided on getting all the food from the China booth. So I ended up getting the bao bun, and then I also got the uh, crispy spicy shrimp, and then the dumplings, because I wasn't too sure about the dumplings, and I don't know, I kind of want to nail down a like preferred item here. So all three of them, we'll taste test them and see which one's the best. Here is the bao bun. That's actually looking really, really good. And then the dumplings. Now, I got the sweet and uh, spicy sauce on the side because I wasn't too sure about that. And then I also got the noodles and the shrimp. Now, I'm happy that I did uh, get something else because they only give you like two shrimp with the noodles. That's the only thing I noticed. You definitely get a lot more noodles than shrimp. But we'll try them all. Oh, I almost lost one. Did you see that? It's literally hanging on by a strand. Get back in there. Get that shrimp in there. Get back in there, shrimp. I'm gonna try the shrimp first. Now they said the shrimp is not spicy. The noodles just have a little bit of a spice. So we'll try the shrimp first. Here we go. Yeah, how are ya? They call me Mr. Magoo. <laughs> he said Mr. Something. I'm like, yeah, hi, Mr. Morrow. That's very nice. Oh, Mr. Magoo. That is awesome. I love Mr. Magoo. That is really, really good shrimp though. I'm very excited for that. And it's so funny, I'm still laughing because he called me Mr. Magoo. That is like one of the best compliments, but kind of not compliment I think I've ever gotten. <laughs> I, I can see that it might be Mr. Magoo. I'm a little clumsy. I can't see well. <laughs> oh yeah, these are actually really, really good. Uh, I'm not too big fond on the sauce, but I could eat these just the way that they are. And they got a nice little pan fry. Now we're gonna try the noodles. Now these are the ones they said have a little spice to it. And these come with the shrimp. So you get the shrimp and the noodles. Hmm. I don't taste much spice. Oh, it's creeping in there a little bit. Oh yeah. It's got a little bit of a little bit of spice. Not too bad. I can eat these and uh, I eat my wings mild, so that's like that's my like hot or spice preference is like mild so if i can eat these and you can eat mild wings you should definitely be able to enjoy these 
Last but not least, the bun. We're gonna get all that meat right in there, bada bing, bada boom. And then we're gonna fold it over like a taco. Perfect. Ooh, this one might be a little messy. Pull off just a little bit, a little bit to the side here. Mmm. Surprisingly enough, honestly, the bun was my favorite. And then the dumplings, and then I would say the noodles and shrimp. Uh, but wow, I wasn't gonna get that. And now I think this is my favorite like little bun here that they've had so far. It's crazy because technically I wouldn't have gotten that bun, but uh, now I did get it and it ended up being my favorite. And now I'm waving a pop sticker around like, hello. Oh, and also <laughs> the announcement came on again. Pot sticker. Hmm. As I was sitting there, somebody yelled, Frozen opened back up. So apparently Frozen was closed. Frozen was like shut down for a while and it just reopened right now. So everybody is running there. Look at, look at everybody running to Frozen. I don't blame them. I'm running to Frozen. This is exciting things happening right now. Oh, we might not have a wait at all here. It just reopened? What's the chances of that? Whoa! <laughs> nice! This is great! <laughs> oh no, that balloon's flying away! Get that balloon! Alright. <laughs> when Frozen reopens, things get crazy. <laughs> we got a mask up here. Gotta get our mask on. But I bet you we're gonna get on here probably five minutes, ten minutes, let's say. Well, let's time it. It is 5.16. 5.16. Let's see how long the wait's gonna be. I got my mask ready and upside down, just the way it should be. It's 55 minutes, but there's no way if it just reopened. Look at that. This is gonna be amazing. Mask on, yep. Ice master delivery. Yoo-hoo, big summer snow day blowout. That is crazy. Nine minute wait for Frozen. Nine minutes! <laughs> oh, there it is, our boat! It's very bright in this boat. Oh, we're taking off! and everything and I don't blame them like that's a big difference nine minutes to an hour and 20 minutes now that we actually got frozen done I think we'll start heading back in that direction to future world I was thinking about hopping on the Grand Fiesta tour but we kind of just did a boat ride so maybe we should do something more up in the air as we get walking towards future world though i do want to stop at one booth and talk about something that is pretty hysterical from the last video that i did here 
Last time I did a video, I was focusing on adult beverages or beverages with alcohol. And I got this mimosa flight from the Shimmering Sips. And I kept on calling the Blood Orange Mimosa the tropical one. And the tropical one the Blood Orange one. And it's, it's like so apparent when I'm editing the video. But when I'm talking, it kind of just happens. And you can't take it back once you leave and you drink them. And uh, when I was sitting at home editing, I was just like, oh. I'm just gonna leave it in. Let's just roll with it. And I'm glad that some people caught on and were like, wait a second, that's the blood orange one. So my favorite one was, oh, I don't know. I kind of mixed them up. I'm not too sure which one it was. I'm only kidding. I'm pretty sure it was the blood orange one. Definitely the blood orange one. I have yet to try any of the noodles at the noodle exchange. It's just been too hot to actually eat some soup or some noodles. Now, I would try that shrimp and coconut curry rice noodles. That's probably going to be the one I will go with. But maybe we'll wait for a nice night. A nice night when we're walking around. Not the high noon afternoon. High sun. Where is the sun? Oh, there it is. Back there. <laughs> I was thinking about heading over to Soren, but I kind of feel in the mood to ride Figment. I mean, we've already done Frozen and Test Track, so I, I, I can go for a, I can use a little Figment. I love this Urchur, I love Figment. A lot of people don't like it, but I love Journey into Imagination, so Figment it is. It actually looks like a lot of people are going to Journey into Imagination. Usually this is a walk-on, but look it, Figment's getting all the recognition he deserves. Today's theme is how to capture your imagination with Dr. Nigel Channing. I am very excited. We're heading on into our little car. Goodbye, we'll never forget you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our special drive-through open house. I'm Dr. Nigel Channing, chairman of the Imagination Institute. Hello, on your tour you'll see how the five human senses can capture your imagination. Our first stop is the sound lab. We'll begin by testing your hearing with a series of tones. Left ear, right ear. Left, right. What? This is on. Um, hello? Hello. Who is this? It's Figment. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. Now I say imagination must be captured and controlled. Well, 
I think we learned a valuable lesson today. Imagination works best when it is set free. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Well, I guess now that we've done Figment, Frozen, and Test Track, maybe we'll just uh, call it a day and head out. Look at how beautiful Spaceship Earth looks from here, doesn't it? It's like nothing's around it. It's got its own, like, like aura. Wow. Really gotta sometimes just stop and look at how beautiful things are. And I guess with that, like I said, I'm gonna call it a night here. I feel like I've been looking really festive with my headband and my fancy shirt, my new hat. Yeah, this looks really good in camera. And then I got those flowers in the background. Anywho's, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye. And there goes the monorail. Wonderful, isn't it? And a spaceship Earth.